X-Men Gold number 16 by Mark Guggenheim and Lan Medina. Kitty Pride and Lydia Nance finish squaring off for a segment on the Fact Channel, and when it's clear that they're off air, Kitty speaks her mind. Later, she walks through Times Square with Colossus. She plants a big kiss on the Russian and hands him a hotel room key. Meanwhile, Logan, Storm, Nightcrawler, and Rachel revel in the protesters in Central Park, who are obviously on their side. Suddenly, a portal opens up. Kolagoth's people have returned for him. Anol runs out with the news of the extraterrestrial interference, while Rachel sends a psychic phone call to the still-sleeping and still-shacked-up Kitty and Peter. Anol climbs out of a window, or something, I think, and Logan uses the word exsanguinating before it turns out that an Alpha Flight Squadron attacks the alien fleet. They make quick work of the Canadian Air Defense, which is unexplained why they'd be in New York, before Kitty sends Rachel and Storm up to get their attention. Next up, I guess Nightcrawler transports the rest of them up to the top of the ship when Kitty phases through it to attack them. The ship heads down to pick up Kolagoth and Logan falls from it. Rachel flies down to catch him and is blasted from behind, falling and landing hard on the ground. The ship lands and all the X-Men in and around it fall down. Storm exclaims in surprise at something and the ship picks up its passenger, later leaving and traveling through the portal that it emerged from. Armor wakes the sleeping Logan, explaining the situation. Storm and Colossus are okay, Rachel Summers is hurt again, and Nightcrawler and Kitty are missing. The issue wraps with Logan vowing to get them back. How that happens will have to wait though, as this issue is left to be continued. Well, it looks like this series and its crossover appeal can only last so long. So once again, we're left with the writing and art to stand on its own merits. Unfortunately, that appears to be difficult for this team, who showed a heavy lack of continuity, characters using terms that they'd never used in the past, and just general X-laziness. You know, I'm not expecting a Chris Claremont-esque tale every issue, but this one came off as written and penciled way too quickly. In terms of ranking X-Men books, this one falls to the bottom of the list with a thud. I just hope that there's a plan to get it back up. I give this one a 4 out of 10. If you like this video, there's hundreds more like it spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the boxes here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdiestkidyouknow.com. You can also follow links to my Facebook or Twitter pages, as well as a link to this very issue for sale on my eBay page by clicking below. For the Nerdiest Kid You Know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.